Hey. Hi, hi, and welcome. This is Joe Zuleika, founder of Women Who Lead With Heart, and the special Facebook group, Create More Confidence, coming on live for my evening training on a Sunday night. Today's topic is why your boss behaves badly, and what can you do about it? If you're joining me live, come on in and say hello, or if you're on replay, give me a hashtag replay. Always lovely to hear who is tracking out there and learning from these lessons. I have a good one for you tonight. I have some very common denominators for why bosses tend to behave badly. What's the source of this behavior and how knowing that can help you? And one big surprise at the end. So tune in and let's listen in. Are you ready? If you're joining me, it's probably because you feel the need to identify or commiserate or get support with having a bad boss. If you have somebody that's very challenging to work for, they might be moody, they might have a bad temper, they might be difficult to read, they might be difficult to follow, they might be micromanaging, they might be um, difficult to communicate with, they might just be difficult people. And for many people out there that I hear that are in my network, many women that are being coached by me, it's a really toxic topic for women who have a good job, a really good circumstance and situation. A lot of things really check all the boxes, but they cannot stand their boss. This is perhaps one of the most toxic experiences that we can have at work because we don't feel like we're in control ultimately of what's happening above us and what's happening to us at work. Okay, so let's dive in and identify some common reasons why our boss behaves badly. In general, bosses are people too. And some of them are not as consciously aware or capable of managing their emotions and they're acting out. Bosses who have stress, we all have stress, are just responding to triggers that are unmanaged. And what we receive is behavior that we interpret personally, that we feel like is perpetrated towards us or directed especially towards us, which might be the, the case. But too often, it's just a byproduct of our boss not coping well. We can have bosses that are acting out, bosses who um, are covering for their own weaknesses. People who are protecting their weaknesses have a fear of being found out as incompetent or that they will be humiliated for making a mistake or for looking bad. And that type of boss will overcompensate. They'll overcompensate by being a hard boss, a dictatorial boss, a dictator, somebody who is sort of lording over their employees and on them all the time because of their fear of under delivering of, on behalf of the whole team or their fear of losing or their fear of looking incompetent or being humiliated or feeling like they don't have it all together. So protecting their weakness can be the trigger that motivates some bad boss behavior. But indulging that weakness can also be a source of bad boss behavior. So when we're protecting our fear of looking vulnerable or weak or incompetent, that's one thing. But we can also indulge that weakness and overly rot and think and process over those areas that are our soft spots. So if we worry that we don't have all our ducks in a row and we tend to be a processor, we can indulge in too much processing and slowing things down because we're not secure and sure of ourselves. Or we can indulge our weakness by if we're wanting results quickly, we can become too impatient and need speed and just want things done faster, which can be stressful for people who are following a boss like that. If the weakness is that the boss is indecisive and they just feel like they need more time or more input or more information to be able to make decisions, 
then it's challenging for those who are following that boss who are clear on the information and do feel like they know the right direction. But if the boss is indulging this weakness and this feeling like they're not ready to make a call yet, that will be stressful for their employees. Or if a boss indulges a weakness of needing control, needing to make sure everything is done just the way they do it, you know what happens there, they become a micromanager. And that's incredibly stressful for the people that they manage to feel like they have no autonomy, no authority to do what they know it's right, no ability to take action or be creative. It's just um, a pin in the bubble of enthusiasm when you have a micromanaging boss. So we, we can either have somebody who's trying to protect their weakness or who is indulging their weakness, and that makes it challenging for us as employees to work for that type of person. So overall, regardless of the reasons why your boss might be, be behaving badly, there are a few common denominators that tend to be true. One, they are just unself-aware. They are unaware of themselves. They have no sense of how they're coming across or how toxic or challenging their behavior is. They don't realize the power of their impact of their indecision or their micromanaging or their over-processing or their impatience. And they do damage. They might, in their unself-awareness, lack empathy or care or concern for their employees. So even if they were aware, it wouldn't be that important to them. That is also a common theme with bosses who behave badly. And all of this points to low EQ, low emotional intelligence. If you don't have massive self-awareness and the ability to manage yourself, those two things are the foundation of emotional intelligence and they are what promote good boss behavior. Bosses who are aware, bosses who do care about their employees, bosses who care about how they come across, bosses who are able to uh, modulate their delivery depending on to whom they're speaking. But if you have somebody who doesn't know and doesn't care, then you're gonna have a boss that behaves badly that's gonna be very challenging to work with. So that's one common denominator with a lot of bad boss behavior. Here's the other one, no training. Do you know what the Peter Principle is? Have you heard that term? It was actually a satirical term that was created in a book years ago. The idea that people are promoted just above their level of competence that you can be an exceptional salesperson, and then maybe you do okay as a sales manager, but as a director of sales, you might absolutely crumble. You're promoted beyond the skill set that had you a shining star several rungs below. And this idea, the Peter Principle, is that we all rise just to the level of our own incompetence. It's a very saucy term, but it is true in many cases where Whatever realm we hold or our bosses and supervisors hold, they haven't received the feedback and the training and the leadership investment in their own skills to be able to rise up and then lead others. They're merely promoted to a position because previously they had done a good job. This is a huge problem because it means that they have absolutely no mentoring or guidance or training. There's no focus on people management. There's no awareness that that's an important skill and people are just leading in the dark. They're just striding forward, using their own wits, following their own internal guidance as they think is fit without really having any basis for what they're doing and why it might work or not work. It's really lunacy and I see it happening all over the place. I don't, I, I am stunned at the lack of people development that happens in corporate America. It's almost like we just expect people to be really, really good, to be really competent, to be really self-aware, to be really good leaders, to have vision, to have the ability to lead others, to, to be able to grow and build a team. But where does that come from? Either you're lucky enough to have worked with somebody who has developed their own emotional mastery and their ability within the job to have some expertise with how to develop people, 
or they found a leadership camp that actually served them, or none of that's happening and they're just striking out. It's like playing darts in a dark room and hoping you hit the bullseye. You can have a whole mess of darts and you can keep throwing, but chances are you're not even gonna get on the board. The difference is turning on the light switch, having a whole mess of darts, and then getting some training on how to throw those darts. And that's what leadership training does. And that's what I'm here to do. That's my passion. It's my reason for being, and it's what I do all day, every day, and have done for 30 years. I train leaders. If you don't know how to resolve conflict, how to give direct feedback, how to motivate others, how to delegate, if you don't know how to manage up or manage down, how to inspire people, how to run a good one-on-one -on -one meeting or a board meeting, how are you going to learn? So this is the big surprise that I have for you. Regardless of where you are in your organization, whether you too are a supervisor or you're somewhere further down the rung of the big boss that perhaps drew you to this talk, if you have a boss that behaves badly, it doesn't even matter why they behave badly. The answer is always the same. You need to level up your behavior. You need to level up your skills to be better, regardless the reason why your boss isn't a good boss. This means that you learn these skills for yourself. You learn how to resolve conflict, how do you to work intradepartmentally and interpersonally. You learn how to hire and fire and train and guide and mentor and manage performance. You learn how to inspire people, how to have effective workflow that comes from you and through you, how to delegate well. When you learn all of this, regardless of what's happening up here, then you have agency over your own career. And then you can set down that toxic resentment that's here. If you find yourself in this swirling whirl of constantly feeling dragged down by bad boss behavior, I'm here to tell you that it affects you. If you don't take charge of your own leadership, of your own skills so that you can manage yourself and manage others and manage up, you will suffer. And that's not what you're here to do. You can get caught up in a cycle of resentment, righteous indignation, you're right, but you're still indignant, and you're angry, and you're frustrated, and you're full of angst and even fury. And this affects you and it infects you. It will affect your sleep. It will affect your sense of peace and your blood pressure. Having a bad boss that is unmanaged and you're not coping with it well will affect your health. And it will even affect and infect your important relationships. If you're somebody who comes home and needs to debrief at length with your partner about all the terrible things that happened at work and how incompetent and insane your boss is and how terribly managed things are and how much pain and suffering it's perpetrating on your life, then you are just in that swirl. And you're saying yes to it by allowing that to still be the circumstance that drives your life. Does this mean you have to quit? That you have to fire your boss and go find a different one? Maybe, but more important, you want skills to be able to understand what's happening around you and then manage yourself in an ego and drama-free way so that you can be the emotionally intelligent ninja in the office. You can see the drama cropping up. You can see the defensiveness. You understand how people are protecting themselves. You see the egos and you can level up above it. You can rise above, find your own internal support structure and become a clear beacon for what's right and true and make good decisions. And you will become absolutely magnetic to the good people in the organization. This is a huge part of what I do in my leadership coaching ladies. If this is the type of support and learning and lessons and training that you crave, 
not just how to deal with a boss that's behaving badly, but to get the skills so that you can manage that person and manage yourself in a really challenging environment, then you gotta come on. You gotta come on and find me, book a clarity call, see if my leadership program might be right for you because you deserve so much more than to deal with a bad boss, with a boss that behaves badly, with any type of resentment and anger and fury and frustration that's in your career. I will post a link in the comments below for how you can find me, and I look forward to talking to you soon. That's what I have tonight.